I left the mountains and headed south to explore the far eastern coast. This area is more rural and far less visited by travelers. There is definitely more freedom camping widely available, so I was able to post up near the shores of the Southern Ocean to see if I can spot some of New Zealand's own seals and sea lions resting on the banks. Their habitat mainly consists of rocky cliff sides and wide open beach reserves. There are several different species of seals and sea lions to be found, all of which hold their own territory. All right. Their main goal to come ashore is to rest up after a day in the waters and to also find a potential mate among the sleepy sand dunes. I also took a side quest to visit the southernmost point of New Zealand called Slope Point. It was super windy and it's about as close as I've ever been to Antarctica. More inland, I found refuge in the heavily forested area called the Catlins. It's another rainforest preserve and this area is just teeming with many beautiful waterfalls, most of which are easily accessible after a short, well-paved hike. There are plenty of blowholes, oceanic riptides, and a massive sheep population as well. Hmm? I visited my first big city called Dunedin. This college town features plenty of Victorian architecture, restaurants, and is home to Spate's Brewery, crafting New Zealand's best-selling beer since 1876. Another famous landmark nearby is Baldwin Street, crowned as the steepest street in the world by the Guinness World Records. It's a residential street with a whopping gradient of 35% that challenges runners and cars alike to tackle its short but steep climb. The current running record for the street stands at 1 minute and 56 seconds. The harbor and hills around Dunedin are the remnants of an extinct volcano providing an excellent landscape for outdoor sports like mountain biking, golfing, and sailing. The Otago Peninsula is also a must-do when traveling outside the city as it hosts a number of wildlife reserves such as the Royal Albatross Colony, which is the world's only mainland breeding colony. continued on along the coast to visit some more natural oddities with a quick stop in Oamaru, which is an old port town that is now heavily influenced by the steampunk culture. My last stop on the east coast was the Canterbury region to the small harbor town of Akaroa. Well, I've arrived. Akaroa is a tiny, popular resort town sitting on a sheltered harbor inside a large, sunken volcano. It's the most French town in New Zealand and relies heavily on that influence from street signs, historic buildings, and a passion for fine food. The Banks Peninsula is one of New Zealand's most unique landforms. With endless hills, rolling mist, and extensive coastline, it's nature's playground. While exploring Akaroa, I couldn't help but notice how many historic cemeteries there are in the region. So a small tidbit of knowledge, uh, Akaroa was actually colonized by the British just before the French. And just walking through around these areas, there's four separate cemeteries here. Uh, one for the early settlers, one for the Anglicans, one for the Roman Catholics, and one for the French. So with all that conflict during colonization, they just decided to be buried settlers and I guess even in death, they're not united. 
My dolphin viewing from the harbor was unfortunately put on hold. So I crossed over to the other side of the peninsula and after being completely mesmerized by the landscape, made a quick stop at the other port town known as Littleton. It's different from Akaroa as it's more of a relaxed hippie town with art and music as its main focal point. I finally made my way down into the charming town of Christchurch. This is a beautiful commerce city with one of its highlights being the Riverside Market where you can find a huge amount of local and international cuisine options. While touring the city, I couldn't help but notice the large, flat open spaces where buildings once stood. This was the result of a powerful 6.2 magnitude earthquake that hit the Canterbury region in 2011. 185 people lost their lives to this earthquake, and a memorial wall was dedicated to all who perished. It's good to see Christchurch making a comeback since the disaster, with new areas being rebuilt and a more prosperous outlook for the future. I wish the people of Christchurch the very best in making the city stronger and even more vibrant in years to come. Giving hope and prosperity to everyone, except this territorial bird. Why are you running? Why are you running? In a few weeks, I'll be returning north to the west coast of the South Island. Come along with me as I explore more snowy peaks and glaciers of Mount Cook and the surrounding area. As always, thank you for watching, hope you subscribe, and I'll see you next time.